What's up? My name is Chris. This is Poker Chip video number 18 after Poker Chip video number 17, which told you about the perfect starting stack, the perfect chip breakdown, and the perfect blind structure for your home poker tournament. Normally we play No Limit Texas Hold'em. It certainly applies to all other formats of tournaments as well. That was a great video. It told you all about how many chips you should get, what kind of starting stack players should get, your blind structure for a nice five hour tournament. This video is a little different. We're specifically dealing with coloring up because I got a lot of questions both in the comments and also on PokerChipForum.com, a great resource where you should go to learn more about poker chips. Uh, questions about coloring up. Um, I thought it was self-evident how you color up, but I've been doing this for over 10 years. So if you're new to tournaments and you're new to hosting tournaments, you should know how to color up. So that's what this video is all about. Now, if you're using my starting stack, make sure you watch the previous video. When the first break approaches, it's gonna be time to color up the T25s, the green chips normally. So as the break approaches in my tournament, I make an announcement to all the other players. I say, make sure one player at each table, and I've typically got three tables going, one player at each table, please buy up all the green chips at the break or as the break approaches. And yes, I have the players do it. And most players, home game players who played in home tournaments know how to do this. You may have a really inexperienced table or two and you may have to show them the way I'm gonna show you right now how to do it. One player buys up all the chips. So you look around at all the different starting stacks and you'll see over here, this guy's got a ton of green chips and that's cool, but really what you're looking for is the chip leader. You want the person who has the most bigger denoms. This guy's got a ton of blacks, he's got a ton of yellows and oranges. Clearly this is my stack, obviously the chip leader. The chip leader is the one who should buy up the green chips. So the chip leader says, okay, who's got green chips here? Uh, you over here, how many greens do you have? And this person cuts out one, two, three, four, 100, 200, 300, 300 chips. So he says, I will give you three blacks for all of your green chips. So here's 300 here and 300 comes in. That's how the chip leader starts to buy greens. And he goes around the table and says, how many do you have? Well, I've got 75. Well, that's an odd amount. That's below 100. So I'm not gonna buy anything. Just leave your odd numbers in front. This guy's got one, two, three, four, 125. Well, I'll give you 100 for 100 and keep that odd green in front. All the way around. And it gets, doesn't get tedious at all right here. This guy's got 250, so he gets 200 blacks, 200 and blacks, and greens come back here. This guy looks like he's got 100, one, two, three, four, 100 and a quarter, so he gets 100. Here comes 100, and 100 goes here. This fella's got one, two, three, four, 100 and a quarter also, so he just gets 100. Leave that odd one in front. Finally, big mongo greens here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five hundred. That's five hundred plus. One, two, three, four, two hundred and fifty. So that's seven hundred and fifty total. So the chip leader can give a five hundred chip and two one hundred chips for seven hundred total. That's right here. Seven hundred comes right over here and leave the odds in front. These guys don't have any greens, so that makes that easy. So now the chip leader can go make PP and you as the TD can step in. And I always like to make sure people are watching what I'm doing. Now, tournament directors come in and they're gonna color up all of these greens, one player, and then we're gonna round up the odd ones. And how do we do that? A lot of tournament directors to this day do this the wrong way. They look for a rack full of smaller chips. I got a rack of hundreds here, so I'm just gonna color up all the greens with the hundreds. Don't do that. If you watch the previous video, you know uh, you shouldn't really have any odd um, smaller denoms left over anyway if you're purchasing the breakdowns that I told you to purchase. What I do as a tournament director, I do not bring more small chips into the game. I pick the highest denomination in the game. I bring an empty rack to each table. Along with that empty rack, I bring a single 5K chip. That's all I'm gonna need. First thing I do is I look around at the different stacks and say who's got the most who's got all the greens? Well this guy does. Okay, and then he also has a ton of other chips. So the first thing I do is make change for this 5k. I'll put it down in front. I say 5k right here, and I'm gonna get four yellows. One, two, three, four yellows, 
and two whites, which are 500. So 5,000, now that's in my hand, and the orange chip is in front. Okay, I may change there. He doesn't really have enough black chips to round up chips, but we'll get to that. I got my change in my hand, I put down the empty rack, and I say, okay, it's time to use this change to color up all these greens. We put a barrel for each here. A barrel of T25s is worth 500, by the way. A little shorthand there. Put that down here. So he's gonna have at least 1,500, it looks like. Yep, and a bit more, 15. 16, 17, 50, he's got 17, 50 there. All right, that's a little odd. Why don't I just make it an even 2,000, right? So I pull from his stack, 17, 18, 19, 2,000. We got 2,000 right here. Odds are over here, 2,000 right here. I reach into my change stack and I put 2,000 in front. I say 2,000, I drag this right into the middle. This is now out of play. Now it's time to round up the odd amounts on the, that everybody has. I'll leave this 2,000 in front here. Uh, but I don't have any blacks in my hand. Hmm, who's got a lot of blacks? Oh, this guy right here has a lot of blacks. I say to everybody, I got a 1K chip, I'm putting it down in front, I'm taking 10 blacks. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now I've got 1,000 in blacks and I can go around the table and round everybody up. Oh, rounding up. This is very simple, straightforward. It means if you have a smaller chip, odd amount of smaller chips, I round it up to the next largest chip. There is a process called race off or racing off your chips. I don't do that. A lot of card clubs and casinos don't do that anymore. A lot still do. They do this whole elaborate race off thing with the cards. Don't need to do it. Complete waste of time uh, in, in tournaments, especially smaller buy-in tournaments and especially faster paced tournaments like this one. I round up. I do not race off. So if you want to learn about racing off, there's probably some half hour video on that. This is roundup, it's very simple. You got an odd amount of greens, you get one black 100 for the odd amount. You take that, put that in the middle. This guy's got one green, so he gets one black. This guy's got two greens, so he gets one black. This guy's got one green, he gets one black. This guy's got one green, he's got one black. Two greens for one black and two greens for one black. I leave everybody's roundups in front, put the odd change in the rack. And since this is an even table of 10, I should know I should have 80 green chips here total in front of me. And I do, I am done coloring up this table. I take one empty rack and one 5K chip to the other tables, I take this away with me. I make sure to hold on to this change, I guard that change. These green chips are out of play, so I'm a little more cavalier about leaving them lying around. As I said, I always make an announcement to everybody that are coming and going during the break about what I'm doing. I'm always really loud and just as a courtesy. It's a $45 tournament, I'm not doing any shenanigans, but if I wanted to, this would be the opportunity to do it. I always make sure that people are always watching exactly what I'm doing, and I announce what I'm doing as a show of good faith. Uh, the only thing I ever bring to any table is one 5k chip and an empty rack. I don't bring a bunch of other smaller chips. Use the big chips. That's what they're for. And then when you have chips that are out of play, like these green 25s, it's okay to leave them out. I just leave them over on the countertop because they can't be used. So, and, you know, nobody's going to try to slip them into play. It's not a big deal. The change that you get is very important that you put that away and store that away so nobody can get to it just to remove temptation. You know, it's it's a subject for a whole nother video, but people doing shenanigans, you know, cheating in poker, uh, in low stakes home games, is very rare. Um, these are all my friends. I do trust them. I also make them cut the cards because, you know, that's just a good habit to get into. Anyway, didn't mean to go off track there. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you have questions, please put them in the comments. I will attempt to answer them. Coloring up should be straightforward and fast. You should have your players, one person buy up all the small chips. And then all you do is bring one big chip and round it up. Uh, very straightforward. Make change if you have to. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's been helpful. Hope it makes sense. And I hope now you understand why you don't need to buy extra low denominations. Just use a big denomination. Make change. You've got change on the table. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching, and I will see you next time. Peace. Yeah.